Gettner Drummond officially took office as the state's newest attorney general three months ago, and those months packed with topics top of mind for Oklahomans. This morning in studio, A.G. Drummond with us. Good morning, and thank you for being with us. Good morning, Kylie. All right, so starting with that first question, first three months, how are you feeling in this new role? Hey, it's been a busy time. Um, you know, we came in wanting to make an impact on medical marijuana and the enforcement of the uh, cartels and, and, and uh, syndicated crime that it has populated Oklahoma, as well as uh, bring back uh, connectivity with the Native American tribes, which is important, mm -hmm. and then transparency and accountability at state government. And that's kept us busy. A very busy few months for you. OTA is the next question I want to get to. Uh, they recently announced that they're going to halt plans for their expansion plans, and you've called for an audit into those plans. Can you talk more about that? Right. I, I was surprised by the plan, the call to stop uh, the construction, which gives me pause and concern that we've not managed our financials correctly. So that if, we've, if we're stopping because of uh, bad acts, that's one thing. If we're stopping because we've mismanaged dollars is another, which makes it all the more logical that we would call for the investigative audit to determine what has been done, when, where, and how, to make sure that we're just transparent with our tax dollars. And next I want to talk about the death penalty. You recently came out and said that you would like to see the conviction of Richard Glossop uh, vacated. Can you talk more about why? Right. Well, so Oklahomans have endorsed uh, the, the death penalty, and as the chief law enforcement officer, I'm here to enforce that. When you look at the Glossop matter in totality, there's been issues that raise pause and concern. And the greatest exercise of state sovereignty is the state executing another human. And so to do that, it, it comes with solemnity and gravity and that we have to give pause. And in this case, I believe that there's a sufficient reason to pause and vacate the judgment of Mr. Glossop and remand it back to Oklahoma County. Overall, what are your thoughts about the death penalty here in Oklahoma and that process of uh, delaying those uh, those certain cases? Right. It, it's not so much a delay as a an enlargement of time. Mm -hmm. So the 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 age unit in our Department of Corrections is a, a amalgamation of highly skilled, competent men and women across the state from all the prison systems and 30 days, 34 days before an execution, they begin a protocol every day for 34 days they rehearse this protocol so that it is perfectly executed seamless transparent with the solemnity and dignity necessary and so with a 30-day protocol it was just too fast these men and women i witnessed the execution of eisner they were absolutely emotionally and physically exhausted and to expand it out from 30 to 60 days gives these men and women a time to just breathe go on a family event have a full night's sleep without worrying about the execution protocol and switching gears here, we want to talk about education. Uh, you have come out recently and said that the State Department of Education has gone too far with some of their most recent rules. Uh, State Superintendent has disagreed with you on that. What are the next steps here? Well, I'm so uh, I'm not a policymaker. I'm just the enforcer of the law. And in this instance, we have State Representative McBride that asked, did the State Superintendent go too far? And as we looked at it, in fact, he did. The legislature drafts legislation and state agencies can promulgate rules inside the parameters of that legislation, and the State Department of Education went too far. So I've called it out, and those are now void and, and of no effect. Uh, finally, scary situation at OU last Friday. Yes. Police are now investigating swatting calls there and also some other swatting calls across the metro. Can you walk our, view our viewers through just the prosecution process? Once police are able to Sorry. catch the people behind this, what does your office then do? So these are uncertain times. And, you know, to the listeners, don't play with these swatting events. I mean, it's a crime. You, if you do that, you are a terrorist, and we will fully and, and completely prosecute you. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the, the amount of manpower dedicated to defending the possible shooter, uh, the lockdown of the university, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, now, they, there's real-time things that happen. We have to treat every call as though it's a reality. And in this instance, it was a great uh, waste of resources. And, and this individual will be located and prosecuted. It may very well be a foreign national. Uh, outside the United States and which will be outside the reach of our law. But if you do this inside the state of Oklahoma, I will find you and I will prosecute you. All right. And, uh, you know, just wanted to talk to you about the next few months. Now that we've gotten past the first three months, how do you hope to see these next few months go for you and your office? I started with 208 weeks. I'm now at 194 weeks. And so I take every week, I, I covet every week. I'm uh, the state's 
chief law enforcement officer. I'm here to be the umpire. Uh, I'm, I want to be the adult in the room and do the right thing, irrespective of the political wins. Uh, if it needs enforcement, if we need transparency, if we need accountability, my office is going to deliver. All right, A.G. Drummond, thank you so much for your time and coming in to talk with us about these issues. Again, top of mind for Oklahomans here at home.